like to know regarding our agency with choice program. So if you are new to Agency with Choice and Easter sales, there's some important things you need to know if you are planning to make the transition over to our Agency with Choice program. And that first thing starts with your support coordinator um, with a referral. You want to talk to your support coordinator about the self-direction program and the services that we offer. And with those services, um, how they can support your loved one or yourself. So that referral goes through our, the iRecord system and your support coordinator submits it. We also then have an enrollment and onboarding process. And that enrollment and onboarding process requires you to complete necessary documents um, like the background check, the carry check, drug test, and a motor vehicles report. Uh, once you finish that enrollment and onboarding process, you'll go through a process with our verification and compliance team. And there they work with you on getting your service detail reports approved, as well as going over timesheets in the electronic timekeeping system. We also have a documentation training where you learn how to properly write the notes for your service detail report, as well as the documentation for you supporting the services for that, lo that loved one or the individual. We do have some mandatory trainings that are through the state of New Jersey in the division. Um, if you are providing medication or transportation, there are some additional trainings that need to be completed for that. So it's important for you to understand that those trainings have to be completed about 180 days from your first day work. That is not the start date on your service detail report. It is the first day that you start working and you actually submit a timesheet. We also have something called the PMPM, which is the per member per month. And this is a fee that is added into the budget to cover the expenses for the program through agency with choice. It's important to note that what the pay rate is and the billable rate is, is two different things. So the pay rate is the rate that's decided with the support coordinator, the family, and the individual. And the billable rate is the rate that is billed out and put into the plan and comes out of the budget. The billable rate is always a little higher than the pay rate, and that's because it has a 15.1% tax that's added onto it, and that does not include the PMPM PM rate. So if you are looking at your plan and your service detail reports and you have the question, what is the PMPM PM rate? That's what it is. And then why is the billable rate different than the pay rate? Now you understand the breakdown for both. Some important things to note about coming to Agency with Choice is that we offer benefits here at Easter Sales. Those benefits include medical benefits, vision, dental, retirement, and disability. What's important to note about these benefits is that in order to receive benefits, you have to work 30 plus hours a week. And for retirement benefits, in order for you to opt in, you have to work 35 plus hours. These benefits are offered to everyone that is working the 30 hours and then for the retirement 35 plus. Again, you do have to opt into these benefits. The actual cost for the plan that you choose does not come out of the individual's plan. This cost is shared between Easter Seals and the service um, and the self-directed employee who chooses to opt into these benefits. There is a cost in the PMPM, PM, like I said, when you initially put it in the plan, and that can be discussed if you are going to be opting into benefits when you first start the process. Something else that we like to offer our SDEs when coming into our program is that they can accrue time based on the hours that they work. So we do have paid time off for all SDEs, um, that's for part-time and full-time employees. So your time is accrued based on your hours that you work. So the more that you work, the more PTO time you accrue. For everyone, we offer six paid holidays throughout the year. And those six paid holidays include New Year's, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and there's a few others that's listed on our website. So it doesn't matter if you're full-time, if you're part-time, you will be offered those benefits um, working through our Agency with Choice program. 
We also have on-site CPR and first aid training. And what that is, is we offer this, this CPR and first aid class through our Jamesburg office, as well as several offices throughout the state of New Jersey. So you do not have to go looking for a CPR and first aid class and try to figure, is this the correct class? Am I taking it? Am I going to get credit for this CPR and first aid training? When you take the class with us, we cover the costs for the CPR and first aid class, as well as we give you a reimbursement um, for taking that course to be certified um, and be in compliance for working under the self-direction program. And then lastly, we have open enrollment. So right now, if you are currently a, a self-directed employee or you're interested, we have open enrollment that goes throughout the year, but we also have a specific time, which is now, where we do information sessions about our benefits, and you can get all of that information on our website at financialmanagementservices.com. Now, some important updates to note is that with our program, we've took a lot of consideration into making sure that everyone has the support when they transition over to agency with choice. So that means that we now offer individual and dedicated specialists that assist with the onboarding process. And we don't just do this over the phone. We do this virtually where we offer families and individuals, as well as support coordinators, training sessions over the computer to learn how to enroll in our services. And we also walk them through the paperwork and all documentation so that they can have assistance when completing the enrollment and onboarding process. We also have in-person dedicated days that are bi-weekly on Wednesdays from 12 to four. No appointment is necessary for these. We are in our Jamesburg office where we have enrollment specialists and they can go through the enrollment process where you're able to sit down, fill out the enrollment documentation, schedule your doctor's appointments, schedule your fingerprinting, as well as scheduling your drug test for enrollment and onboarding. And like I said, there's no appointment needed. You come on into our office between the hours of 12 p.m. and 4 p.m., and you're able to receive assistance with anything. This also includes if you have questions about your service detail report or your timesheets or our, our new electronic system. The next available dates for these sessions is going to be November 8th and November 15th. Just recently, we added some extended customer service hours through our phone. So now our customer service representatives are available between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then 8.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Saturdays. These customer service representatives are available to answer questions about enrollment and onboarding. They can also assist with scheduling appointments for your onboarding process. And they can also assist with any questions you may have about our new electronic timekeeping system. PACE is our new electronic timekeeping system as well as documentation. We were using paper system and now we are using the electronic system. With this system, you're also able to access different information regarding your service detail reports and any past time that you may be putting in. We also have a credible system, which allows you to access health records, and it has all of the documentation regarding the individual. This system is only available to parties that are approved. So that means if you have self-directed employees um, and you do not want all of them to have that information, they will not receive access to this credible system. Something important to note is that although we have moved to an electronic system, our vendors are currently still using paper billing. So if there are any questions regarding billing for vendors, um, community transportation, activities, um, that all is still going through paper. And lastly, for our updates, we have some vendor goods and services, and that's our provider database that's listed on our website. And that database is for any goods and services throughout New Jersey that's enrolled with Agency with Choice. This list allows you to see what other activities 
are available in different counties throughout the state of New Jersey. Now I'm going to go over some the acronyms as well as some definitions for the information on this page. So the first one we have is EVV, which is the Electronic Visit Verification. The next one we have is DDD, the Division of Developmental Disabilities. SDE is Self-Directed Employee. ME is Managing Employer. SC is Support Coordinator. The SCS is the Support Coordination Supervisor. The DHS is the Department of Human Services. AWC is for Agency with Choice. The SDR is the Service Detail Report. FMS is the Financial Management Services. FI is the Physical Intermediary. CBS is Community-Based Supports. IS is Individual Supports. ISP is Individualized Service Plan. The SP is the Supports Program. The CCP is the Community Care Waiver Program. The HCBS is Home and Community-Based Services. PTO is Paid Time Off. And PMPM PM is Per Member Per Month. Now I'm going to take some questions. Um, this, Like I said, this is an open discussion. If you have any questions regarding agency with choice, please feel free to ask those questions. Thank you, Tashea. And thank you thank for sharing you. your knowledge and the resources that you bring from Easter Seals. We're all very excited to have you with us today and for the following days as well. Please utilize the chat function if there is a specific question that you'd like to ask to share this afternoon, or if there's another question you may have regarding any of the support services or offerings within New Jersey. Um, I do have some questions here that was here. Um, someone asked us, um, I'll answer this one. Another one just came in. I'm sorry. It, it missed. Great. Um, no, they are I coming missed, through quickly. <laughs> yeah. It says, I missed the beginning. How do you get started to switch from PPL to AWC? So I do want to inform you that if you are making the switch from public partnerships to agency with choice, you do have to complete all of the enrollment and onboarding process. In order to start that process, you do have to have your support coordinator submit a referral through iRecord. Um, so what you would do is go to your support coordinator, say, hey, I'm interested in switching over to agency with choice. They would submit a referral and that referral would eventually come to us. It's important to note that when the support coordinator puts that referral in, it does not directly come to us um, immediately. Sometimes it takes a few days to come through. So we always recommend that you reach out to our customer service team. Um, so that you are able to get that information and keep up to date on when the referral is coming through. I have another question where someone asks, where can I find the provider database? So you can find our provider database on our website. And what I'll do is I will pull that up for everyone so that they're able to see it. Give me a second. I'm going to uh, maneuver through the screens and I'll be able to show you our website where you can find the provider database. Wonderful, thank you. While you're pulling that up, there is another question as well regarding paid holidays, so we'll be addressing that next. Is everyone able to see my screen? Kathleen, is my screen available? Your screen is live, thank you. Thank you. So I did cut my camera off just so it, the focus could be on the website. I'm gonna maneuver the website so that I'm able to show everyone what our website looks like. So if you scroll down on the Financial Management Services website, you're gonna go all the way to the bottom. You are going to see the vendor list and you click on the vendor list. 
Once you click on a vendor list, you will see all of the vendors that are registered through Agency with Choice. There's close to about 200 vendors on this list. Um, and what you can do is just base it based on what you're looking for. So if you are looking for art classes, you can type in art and any classes or services that are offering art will come up on this list for you. Let's say if you live in um, Bergen County, you will type in Bergen and any services and supports within Bergen County will come up. So this is very helpful for people who are looking for services within their area and they only wanna focus in their area or around their area. If you're looking for a specific activity, you're able to type in that activity as well. If you are having some assistive technology or you're looking for assistive technology, you can type in assistive technology and all vendors that provide assistive technology or assessments will come up here. Um, if you are looking for environmental modifications and that's for like home remodels and builds, different things that are going on in your home, if you type that in, it will come in. As you can see on the very first line, we have environmental modification. This is in Bergen County. The group is called Able Care Group. They have the contact email as well as the contact phone number. So that is where you would find this information on our financial management Um page. And this is the website. So I'll scroll back up to the top for you guys. Um, this pretty much has all of the information that you need in order to enroll with Agency with Choice. So if you are a managing employer, you would go to policies and paperwork, click managing employer, and you scroll down and any information that you needed would be here on our website. You're able to see the enrollment process, what documents are needed, the welcome letter. There's also a video explaining each form, the definitions to what those acronyms mean. All of the information you need is here. We also have the CPR and first aid training schedule. And I'll just click on that since that was one of the questions that we received. So this is the training schedule and I'm not sure, let me pull it up. Let's see if it comes up once I do. Self-directed employees, there we go. I think it's downloading here. Deshaya, I'm putting the website that you have on the screen here in our chat for everybody. Okay, thank you. So I think let's pull it up from here. I want to pull up the training schedule so that they're able to see it. So the training schedule, and thank you so much, Kathleen, for putting that in there, but the training schedule is on our website. And once you click it, it pops up and the training schedule can give you different dates and times. Um, that the CPR and first aid classes are available. Um, and I'll answer, it says you get paid for holidays as an SDE, regardless of whether you are not working on that holiday. Um, yes, so you get paid for the holiday, the holidays that are on that schedule. And again, that schedule is on our website under paid holidays, PTO. Um, and you will get paid regardless if you're part-time or full-time, you will receive payment for that holiday. Now, if you work on that holiday, um, you'll receive your holiday pay as well as pay for the hours that you work. The next question that we have here, it says, I am waiting for the open enrollment packet. When will it, when will it come in the mail? I am a full-time SDE. So open enrollment, like I said, is starting this month. You will receive notification about on what plans are being offered or if you wanna currently stay on the same plan or if there are any changes to your benefit package. Um, most of the time that information comes through email. Um, if you're signed up for paper or mail, that will come through um, the mailing system. If you are worried about um, adding someone or changing something, you are welcome to reach out to our HR department and that's gonna be um, AWCHR. And again, that website, it's on our website, which Kathleen has posted here in the, in the chat for us. So you can click on that website and then you're able to reach out to our HR department as well as customer service. 
And then I have another question here. It says, I'm waiting for the open. Oh, I'm sorry, that one. That's a repeat. Oh, someone, someone else. And I have several other questions that's listed here. Someone else asked about the transition again, about transitioning over from PPL um, to Easter sales agency with choice. And yes, you do have the option. It's important to note that if you are transitioning over from from PPL or agency with choice, regardless what FI agency you choose, you're only able to have one FI agency in your plan. You cannot have both FI agencies in a plan. The only time that both agencies can be in a plan is if you are receiving services through the personal preference program, which is PPP. And that's because that service is going through um, a different payment source. It does not come out of your budget. So that, and that's normally a generic service in your ISP um, and plan. So if you did need to um, transition over, you would need to make sure all services were transitioned over. And something else important to note is that in order to transition over, if you only have goods and services in your plan, you will not be able to transition over unless you have at least one SDE in your plan. So you need to have at least one SDE enroll with us in order for all services to enroll over. It says, if an SDE has done the training through PPL, including CPR and First State, do they need to repeat the trainings? No. So you do not have to repeat the CPR and first aid training. If you are currently certified in CPR and first aid or AED, all of those trainings does transition over to us um, and they are good with us for the two years. Um, and then you can recertify with us after the two years. The trainings that are on the College of Direct Support, those also transfer over to us. You do not have to complete your trainings over. The trainings belong to you. You can look at them as a certificate, um, like when you go to school and you wanted to go to another school, those classes or that certification would still be good at the next school. Um, so it's the same for us. The only thing that doesn't trans transition over is that enrollment documentation, um, the fingerprinting, carry check, background check, drug test, because those are things that has to be done whenever you're transitioning from one job to the next. Thank you. Very thorough. Are there any other questions? You're welcome. Thank you. Obviously, Tashea is a wealth of knowledge. Is there anything else that we can address this afternoon? Tips or tricks, Tashea? Anything that you might want to pull out? No. They, um, I did have someone and they, they gave me some questions beforehand. Uh, someone asked about my uh, background. So I think Kathleen had mentioned um, earlier, I've been in this field for around um, 15 years prior to me taking on the position here at Easter Sales and Agency with Choice. Um, I was a support coordinator as well as a support coordination supervisor um, for around four years and then a supervisor for two. Um, and I've also... Uh, have a loved one at home who I take care of that receives DDD services. Um, and prior to that, uh, I was a case manager for the state through different programs and a program director. So um, I've been in this field for a very long time. Um, so I'm completely dedicated to making sure that the self-direction program um, is fully um, well and resourced uh, for the families that are out there. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that well. We do have another question here. It says, can, uh, can you please review the timesheet submission process? Yes. So the timesheet submission process is um, going to be, and are they referring to the paper one or the electronic system one? Uh, they didn't specify. So if you don't mind, maybe briefly touching on both. Sure. Um, so we have two systems currently right now. Everyone is transitioning over to the electronic system. If you are still using the paper option, you will eventually transition over to um, the electronic system, but the paper timesheets um, are due weekly. Um, you're paid bi-weekly. And with the paper timesheets, you're filling out the information on there. 
and you write everything on it. With the electronic time, uh, time sheet system, you log on to it and you're able to input your time. I'm unable to pull up the system um, just due to the call that we're on right now. But what you can do is log on to our website. And what I'll do is I'll show that as well. Um, I'm going to cut my camera off so that I'm pull it up for you guys. So this is what the timesheet would look like. And again, this is an example timesheet. So this is what the timesheet would look like if you're currently using a paper timesheet. Um, it will give you the hours that are authorized for the week, the outcome, the service, and then it'll have the information on if this is a live-in caregiver, the employee's name, um, what the participant or consumer's name is, and then the employee identification number. What you're going to do is put in the day, the month, the day, the year, and then the time that you work and the time that you leave, the total amount of hours. And again, this is for the paper timesheet. You're going to scroll to the bottom and then you're going to match that first category up there at the top in order to put your documentation notes in about what you worked with, worked on or with for the individual for the day. And after you're finished that, you're going to sign this timesheet and then turn it into your managing employer or the individual if they are signing for themselves. Um, and then your supervisor will sign it and then this can be emailed or faxed then to us. So this is what the paper timesheet looks like. We are currently using a new electronic system. So with that electronic system, um, you actually have to log on to that system in order to be able to see it. Thank you. Very helpful information. We do have one more question here that's come in. It says, you mentioned that our SC has to submit a referral to iRecord. My SC told me that I need to call Easter Seals and get the process started. Can you tell me which comes first? Yes. So you can actually do both at the same time. Um, your SC should uh, should submit the referral through iRecord because it does have to go through the division and have to be approved. But you can also call into our customer service team. And with our customer service team, what they'll do is they'll start the process with enrolling all of the information in order to get those documents out to you. So you can do both. So your SC is correct. You're able to do that process as well while they're completing their referral process. They put the referral in, you call into our customer service team and you can get started. That just gets the ball rolling a little faster for you so that you're able to get, the, get those documents started. I know some of the hardest things that people report back to me is that they have some trouble with um, getting their fingerprinting scheduled or getting their drug test scheduled. And those are things that we also will do for you. So if you need assistance with doing those, um, that's why it's important to call into our customer service, uh, get that referral started so that you can be assigned an enrollment specialist and then they can help you with those things. Perfect. Uh, on the timesheet that you list approved hours, as schedules change based on availability, how do you accommodate for this? So the hours can be worked how you want. The hours that are on the timesheet is what you can be paid for in that top right-hand corner. So what that means is that if you're only approved for 20 hours um, and you work over those 20 hours, um, it you will need to speak to your support coordinator about adjusting that plan and ensuring that those hours are available in the budget to be able to go on to the next one. It's important to only stay within the hours that are approved. And that's why we put that on the timesheet to remind people of what hours are available to them. I do understand that some people um, may, and I'll give this as an example, they're approved for 20 hours. They only work 10 this week and then the following week. Those hours do carry over. So let's say the following week you need to work 25 hours. You're able to do that because you still have 10 from the previous week. So hours do carry over as long as it's within the same service plan or service year is what some people say. It has to fall within that budget, that time um, service plan. So as long as you're within there and you know there's hours 
that are rolling over, you're welcome to use them. If you're only approved for 20 hours and you're consistently working 30 hours or 40 hours, you need to go back to your support coordinator and discuss with them increasing the hours on your plan um, because what you don't want to do is overutilize the budget and get to a point where there are no more hours at all and then you cannot continue to work. Thank you. That was also very thorough. How much PTO time carries over into the new year is our next question. Yes. So your PTO, you are allowed to carry over 10 days into the new year. So if you've accrued enough time during your year of working and you want to carry some PTO time over, you can carry over up to 10 days. Now that may change with the new benefits package. So there is a new, um, like I said, during the enrollment, there are some different benefits that are being added. There may be some taken away. So it's important that you check in um, with the documentation once you receive it so, you, so you're aware. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yes, so right currently right now, 10 days can carry over. Perfect. Thank you very much. These are excellent questions, everyone. Please keep them coming. There is a max amount of hours that an SDE can work. Um, so per day, the max amount of hours that an SDE can work is 16 hours. It is so important to note that you cannot go over 16 hours. And I do understand there are some families out there and their loved ones require 24-7 care, like my loved one. He requires 24-7 care. Um, but when it comes to the self-directed employee, one self-directed employee cannot go over um, 16 hours in one day. And if you are looking at the week, there's 168 hours in a week. And then I believe for the max amount of hours for the week, I believe it's 112 that your support coordinator would be able to put in. It's important to space it out because you don't want your, your self-directed employees to get burnt out um, or be too tired. And these do not, these does not count as sleep hours. Um, so um, everyone should be sleeping and resting themselves and um, a SDE should, uh, should not be being paid during sleep hours. How very important to touch on the well benefits of both parties. Yes. And then someone said, can I make sure that I clarify that the 16 hours is within a 24 hour period and not in one day? So yes, thank you um, for pointing that out. The 16 hours is within a 24 hour period, not within one day. So um, most people look at one day and they start their day um, and they think at the end of the day at midnight, that's what the 24 hours is. But no, it's from the start of your shift. The 24 hour period is from the start of your shift. So if you start your shift, at 8 a.m., 24 hours would be until 8 a.m. the next day. So 16 hours within that time period. If you start your day at 7 p.m., the 24 hours would be 7 p.m. to the following day at 7 p.m. So that would be the 24 hour period, 16 hours within that period. If you are breaking a timesheet down, and let's say midnight comes. It is important to note that when you are doing a timesheet, regardless if it's on paper or if it's through the electronic system, at 11.59, your time stops when you're writing it on the timesheet or inputting that information in. 11.59, it stops. And then the next box would show um, starting at 12 a.m. and from whatever time that you're working. And that's for people who are working overnight. We do have a lot of people who work overnight shifts. Um, and it's important to note that at 11.59, that time stops and a new day starts on your timesheet at that 12 a.m. Very important details, questions we too have received. Yes. Can you confirm, can you be both in PPP and DDD budget? Yes, you can. So PPP is the personal preference program and PPP is run by... Um, Kathleen's organization, Public Partnerships, um, <laughs> and they currently manage that program. And that program does not come out of your budget, out of your DDD budget. So that's why you're able to have that in the plan and be in that PPP program, as well as um, on the DDD's uh, waiver program. And with DDD, 
that program is split between public partnerships and agency with choice. And you have the option to choose which FI agency you would like to go with. Um, and then that comes out of the actual budget, um, regardless if you're on a supports program or that community care program. If an SDE goes to use some PTO time, does it matter if another SDE works at the same time as the hours you take for the PTO time? No, because your hours do not overlap. So if the S, if one SDE is taking PTO time and the other SDE is supporting the individual, they're two different SDEs. Um, so they're two different self-directed employees. So one can take PTO time while the other one is working. And that what that would be is just one SDE is providing coverage. Something important to note is that um, in most cases, two SDEs cannot work at the same time unless it's prior approved by the division. And the plan would need to note that that person needs two to one services in order for two SDEs to be billing or working at the same time. Everybody needs a break. <laughs> Great questions, everyone. Anything else we can answer today while we have her undivided attention? Another one just came in for you. Do, does Easter Seals provide assistance finding SDEs or have a available pool, so to speak, of SDEs available when one is needed or if another one is needed? How do we find employees? So, um, we currently do not have a pool of SDEs. The self-directed um, self program is meant for people to use their loved ones, friends, and relatives, people that they know uh, for the program. But you can also hire people outside of your circle of friends and loved ones. Um, and normally when you need to do that, you would go through a support broker um, and, or a support brokerage ag agency. So that's something you could discuss with your support coordinator. You would tell them that you need some help. You wanna go through the self-direction program. You wanna self-direct your services, um, but you need some help with going through that process. You don't have anyone available um, and they will assist with setting you up with the support brokerage agency. Um, and then that support brokerage agency will assist you in finding employees for you to be able to hire um, as SDEs. We currently don't have a pool it is something that we're working on. So very great question. And it's something that has continually come up. And that is why we are working on something. So look out um, at our website um, for some new information coming in the coming months. Very valuable. Every now and then we need to hire more staff. That happens. Right. Everyone needs staff. You know, it's really hard to find a good staff. So that's definitely something that's important for families out there is being able to find staff that they trust um, and that they can leave with their loved ones. Great question. Thank you, Grace. While using the PACE system for an SDE's timesheet, how do you decide on the correct SVC strategy code if the SDE assists with multiple tasks and activities? So if, if they are a living caregiver, I would always put living caregiver. If they are um, providing services and they do not live in the home or with the person, the individual that's receiving the supports, you would always put um, EVV because that means the SDE should be also clocking in um, through the electronic visit verification system. Um, and if they are completing multiple tasks or activities with them, you just put a note in that note box in the new system and you put what the activities were that multiple activities um, went on. So like, let's say if you started in the home and you put that location um, in near as home, you're putting in the notes that um, you know, yes, we started at home, we provided some ADLs in the home, but we also went out into the community and provided supports there. That's why there's an additional box for you to be able to put notes in. That helps you be able to cover all tasks that you may be completing um, with the person that you're supporting. And thank you so much, Grace.
Is there anything else, Kathleen? Is there anyone else we can assist or answer any questions for anyone? We have hit a bit of a lull in our questions. Thank you so much for all of your help so far. Uh, Tashaya, you've been absolutely imperatively helpful. Um, anything else that we can address for anyone today regarding the programs within New Jersey or agency with choice? Uh, Tashay, of course, is a wonderful reference of knowledge and uh, not only personal knowledge, but also professional. So we are here and able and willing. And give everybody a moment. Again, don't forget to attend other sessions as well. This does run well into the evening. So please don't hesitate to join other uh, sessions. And I will post in the chat here momentarily a link to our agenda as well. Anybody else? questions that you need answers to or anything you'd like to ask specifically for Tashea. I think we're done. It seems like we don't have any more questions. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, and yes, it was recorded and you will be able to rewatch it from the beginning. If you um, think you missed anything that we may have uh, went over, the slides will be available um, on the Collaborative's website. Um, once the conference is over, they will make all of the recordings at, um, available. And just to let you know, Easter Seals Agency with Choice will be offering a webinar with similar information on where we're going into detail about the electronic timesheets, the paper timesheets, and some other updates on November 27. So you can check us out and register for that webinar at the end of this month after that Thanksgiving break. Um, and we will be going over um, information that I went over today, but also going into detail about the system where I will be able to show you what the new system looks like, what those new timesheets look like so you can have an idea, um, a better idea of um, how to manage that system. But in the meantime, you are welcome to join um, and take a look at our uh, website and it has some videos and information about our new timekeeping system. Thank you. With that, we will close today's session. Thank you again to Shea for all your time and resources and knowledge. Again, being the executive director from Easter Seals, you are the go-to resource. Thank you.